I really appreciate your submission. And of course, every other person that called as well, we appreciate. But let me come into the studio. I've got three gent. I'm such a lucky girl. I've got three gentlemen um, in the studio to have this conversation with. Uh, one of them, I miss him so much. Crispy. Hi, Noella. <sighs> You're welcome. Wow, did my voice send shivers down your spine? No, it didn't. Or it sent some wish. cold ripples down You some wish, nipples. you wish, you wish, you didn't. Some cold thing. <laughs> ripples down some nipples. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> hey, hey, oh, yeah, bro, come how? You miss me. I just, you know, oh, yeah, I, I have to give you something. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Well, it's a bar, a bar. <laughs> anyway, gentleman in yellow. Yeah. No, Hi. Hi. What's your name? I'm Martin. Martin, okay. You look like a gentleman. You're a gentleman. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon. Oh no, well Fidelis is also a gentleman. I don't know about you, Crispy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, finally, a lady. <laughs> uh, am okay. I a gentleman? Am I a gentleman? Come again. Am I a gentleman? <laughs> I don't. Remember, <laughs> <laughs> have you? So, um, Fidelis, you're also yeah. welcome. Thank you very much. Um, Diane, Hi. Princess Diane, <laughs> Per. Period. Period. <laughs> anyway, uh, gentlemen and lady, you're welcome. I'm sure you've heard um, and you read the story we are treating today. Um, let me just recap for a f- uh, for those who just tuned into the show. So basically, a man who has a dilemma uh, wants our help. He says that every time he goes to church, he feels targeted. He feels like his pastor's sermons are always woven or centered around him and his lifestyle. He keeps dreadlocks, uh, you know, for a hairstyle and has a lot of tattoos. And sometimes the pastor would preach around it and he feels like the pastor's talking to him directly, you know, (laughs) and he feels judged. And a lot of people have suggested to him to leave or confront, in his words, confront the pastor. And so he needs um, our help. Let me start with Fidelis because he keeps dreadlocks. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, I'm targeting him in our conversation. <laughs> Fidelis, yes. I want to believe you're a Christian. I am a Christian. A very good Christian, but not a church goer. Ooh, yeah. shoot. Why? Why Why aren't you a church goer? Well, the situation, one way or the other, mm-hmm. at the play side line, you understand? I can relate a bit. Okay. Yeah, so in such a situation, well, my situation, mm-hmm. I have been in the church for a long time. Mm-hmm. My mom was like um, a secretary in the church. Okay. So I started braiding and then the women in the church actually were always complaining. I didn't know about mm-hmm. I didn't know what you see. I didn't know mm-hmm. what I see. Then my mom would be like, ask him. Don't come and ask me. Yeah. You understand? So one day a lady came to me and was like, I didn't know about it. Mm. That was like, Mammy Pacho found Hobe. Mm. <laughs> In that tone, yeah. 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 So petty. And then this, she's she's quite old. Okay. So I just said, like, Pacho found Hobe. It was like, oh. I was like, oh, yeah, this is my yeah, life. Yeah, So my mom, I told <laughs> my mom <laughs> about <laughs> it. I said, Pacho. I told my mom about it. Yeah. And then she, being a secretary, told the pastor. Yeah. Because I told her that I wasn't going to come to church again. again. Because I don't like how the female, Everyone like the talk. women especially, yeah. they're cool people. No? Yeah. yeah. I didn't like how they were looking at me and yeah. stuff like that. So he, this time around, he was preaching for, not against me. Okay. That you can't judge and started using um, something as yeah. an example and all that. So Just I, to encourage I, you to come yes. to church. Right. So I felt a little bit okay. But the eyeballs that were coming, yeah. I wasn't too comfortable. comfortable. So, you had to so leave. I just had to stop the church. Yeah. I just had to stop. But currently, the church are acting like, you know, it's cool. It's because cool, right yeah. now, it's like everybody's in acceptance of okay. dreadlocks, braids, whether you're in earrings, stuff like I that. See. It is what is in their heart. Yeah. yeah but but if, why do you? keep locks though is it is it um is it a lifestyle fashion or spiritual or whatever to me it's a lifestyle now okay yeah i love it okay i have grown to love it okay i used to keep afro a lot but mm-hmm. the combing mm-hmm. the bathing i'm like why don't mm-hmm. i just grow it out mm-hmm. you understand yeah, but do you, so do you do you see yourself you know taking, taking shaving off? off not now okay yeah i want to grow a family with but, dreadlocks before I can oh be nice yes yeah, so, okay mm-hmm. so what if your pasta <laughs> Or your in-law request that you shave it, would you consider I wouldn't. it? It is me. Yes. I remember being in an interview. Mm. You know, it's how you present yourself. Mm-hmm. So this guy situation like this, perhaps maybe 
Adeni Chino. Yeah. You understand? Maybe smoking, doing uh, yeah. a lot of women and yeah. stuff like that. If you can really relate to what he's saying that is mm-hmm. when you feel drenched like very sad yeah but if you have a different lifestyle from what he's saying yeah you don't need to be too concerned about but what there's something starts. instructive he said he said he's gotten to a point in his life where he feels he wants to draw close to god right, okay. so in spite of his lifestyle and you know that kind of decision it's a gradual process yeah you just can't become a born again and you're holy yeah, holy that's true. it will take some time and that is why you know he goes to church and so for him i can like i want to put myself in his shoes you know for someone who isn't that strong spiritually trying to be strong and draw close to god it would feel some type of way when he's coming to church every day and the sermon is like around him and his life like he would feel like rather than being accepted which he's supposed to Mm -hmm. feel he's being judged so if i were him mm-hmm. i would stop the church okay or if he doesn't want to stop the church mm-hmm. he should just seek the counseling of the pastor mm-hmm. and let him know that charlie daddy or father mm-hmm. whatever you've been saying i've lived that life yeah. but the manner in which you preach is making me feel so bad mm-hmm. and i want to withdraw yeah. from your church yeah because that's not the only place you can yeah worship god yeah some pastors are so like they can be so petty you know what on that note i mean if you're a pastor listening please we really want to be objective with this conversation so let's also get the perspective of a pastor, pastor. Mm-hmm. you're not a pastor please let's get a perspective of a pastor <laughs> 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 i you're want to i want to get into the mind of a pastor what are some of the inspiration um they get you know in in drawing or preparing for their sermon how do they even prepare for their sermon and do they sometimes single out people and you know prepare their sermons around them i really want to know so if you're a pastor listening please text us with your number would give you a call or you can call us and call into the show and we'll give you the audience to share your thoughts with us crispy have you ever been targeted in church um yeah a couple of times for being late so, okay. Yeah, those ones you get it off. No, like. but no. Something you said on the page. I was hoping that you would share that. Which one? Uh, fornication. We. No, no I said for for him, like those people. M- for not who? Me. <laughs> not me. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> you see, I told you as a pastor, we we we, we get in touch with things like this. You yeah. See? And he was making a point uh-huh. that um, you may have dreads. Mm-hmm. And people who usually had mm-hmm. dread from back in the day had a certain lifestyle they lived mm-hmm. with. And so people have associated that hairstyle to the lifestyle. Mm-hmm. But if you know you don't live like that mm-hmm. and the person is saying things like that, you will not mm-hmm. be affected. I'm, I'm taking this from two sides. So pastor side, then you who is the one in the lifestyle. Okay. Like you said rightly, I mentioned on the page that there are people who are fornicating. Some people wake up from their boyfriends and girlfriends' beds and go to church or even go to church with them. The one one person who I feel like you would feel targeted by in the church is Pastor Drew. Tear that. Every single yeah. Sunday morning. Yeah. Seven years on a mountain pulpit. And he'll tell you, more Muslim, more boyfriend, more girlfriend, more Kwaba. You know, it's. You need to understand where you're going, first mm-hmm. off. Mm-hmm. I feel like we innately know certain things that are wrong mm-hmm. right and then when someone points it out we call it judgment mm-hmm. but it's not mm-hmm. right so if you are telling lies and I, I say hey, don't be a liar I've not judged you I've pointed out exactly what you are doing so you think it's our conscience our conscience is judging us but don't you think there's a way around sharing type of sermons like that great. so the person doesn't feel great. like I'm being judged great so that's where and the, consider leaving church that's where the, the church side comes mm-hmm. in most often than not you realize that our churches would go evangelize they get the mm-hmm. new converts and straight into main service no orientation we feel like oh it's church the moment you want to come and join the church just come and sit in the main service and you'll be hearing things and you're wondering ah Charlie where did this thing come from before we got into main service even through youth service we went through that orientation Mm -hmm. there's a reason why people go for impressed me confirmation classes and all of those things they do that to reorient you that you are going into an adult service Mm -hmm. there are certain things that are discussed that it's not for kids Mm -hmm. right so you get to know exactly 
what this service will be about. A new convert who has come and they do dreadlocks or you've gone to visit our ladies at La Paz and, you know, um, cantonments run about there and you've spoken to them, they've come, you know, in church, they are wearing their shorts, clothing and everything. You come and put them right in the service. The, whatever the pastor will see, they will feel hurt and they will leave, right? But you need to have a new convert class. Teach them exactly what it is to be in the hospital that you are coming to, mm-hmm. right? Definitely someone will point out your your illness, not because they are talking to you, but it's a general thing that is happening that the members actually meet mm-hmm. every single day. Mm-hmm. And so it becomes a part of the word, but it's not for you. Mm-hmm. But because you have been in that space and now you're a new person, you think that, oh, they are talking to me, but really, really, they are not talking to but, me. But I mean, the solutions you have given, that I'm sure that is... Uh, something that your church does it's exclusive to your church oh, no. but and yet so for yes. the other churches i mean so so that is something that they, they can mm-hmm. do but if you go into such a space mm-hmm. and you realize that people are seeing things like this mm-hmm. it comes back to the conscience thing i was talking about see we've we've become very liberal in our world where even if anybody is doing something wrong and we would back our, our former self would, would say that no this thing is wrong mm-hmm. but because now everybody say oh we are woke we are this we are that so the person is misbehaving they are they are doing something mm-hmm. but they're like oh yeah that's them it is their choice meanwhile it is it is a wrong thing to be done right. you get it so we as individuals see i go into a church this pastor is saying all of these things mm-hmm. and i why do i feel offended by it you can choose not to be offended if I insult you, that's an offense. Mm-hmm. But if I describe something about you and it's a good thing, would you be offended? Obviously, no. So if if the description about you, mm-hmm. you and Kasa, you know it is bad, why are you blaming me, the pastor, for saying it? Do you, do you get where I'm coming mm-hmm. from? So based on... No, but we're, no one is disputing that it is bad or not bad. Mm-hmm. No one is disputing it. We're saying that this is a sinner. Yes. Okay. Somebody who accepts that he's a sinner. He's not perfect. And yeah. we are not perfect. Yeah. Even pastors aren't perfect. So, for a sinner who has come for salvation in church, mm-hmm. to to hear a sermon that keeps drumming his not it's, so good mm-hmm, lifestyle mm-hmm. in his ears, yeah. is it the best way we can go about it? To, really? to get someone to really draw close to God? No, that, that would not be the way. Yeah. That would obviously not be the way. I mean, it's that's why I mentioned the new convert class. Thing, right. Right. If you go to a church and they, they do not have that, mm. and you've been brought into the main service, and okay. you keep hearing these things over and over it again. It could be worrying. Yes. You mm. can approach someone who might be mm-hmm. a leader in the church mm-hmm. or anything and mm-hmm. let them know, okay, this is where I am coming from. Right. And this is where I want to get to. But these kind of messages are mm. affecting me in this way. Mm. Maybe you might not even know that person could now realize, okay, this person, he's not one of our regular members. So mm. we need to take him through a separate mm-hmm. kind of, mm-hmm. you know, servers and teachings and all those right. things for them to understand that this is how our church, our okay. church works. Because every church, the doctrine is different. It's different. He says he goes to a church where mm-hmm. they accept the mm-hmm. locks and locks, everything yeah. now. But the Orthodox traditional churches mm-hmm. may not like that. The salvation is personal. Mm-hmm. You do not have to leave the Christian fold. Mm-hmm. But you can go to another church denomination mm-hmm. that believes in these things. Okay. Some people don't pay offering. Mm-hmm. Some people don't pay tithe. Mm-hmm. Some people don't clap. They mm-hmm. don't use instruments. Mm-hmm. But if I want to use those things and I feel like that is what will draw me closer to my God. I'll I look find for a, a place. church exactly okay. and be there. Martin. Hello. Any experience? Have you have you gone? You keep you also keep a quite a messy hair. Yeah, recently. <laughs> I started recently. Okay. <laughs> have yeah. you ever felt? Ty- I mean, beyond your hair, your hairstyle. Have you ever felt? You know. Yeah. Like was, some someone was for you. Yeah. Um, I had this pastor who always complained about chain wearing chain and all that. He didn't like it, so he expected us. The members also not to like it. As in jewelry? Yeah. Okay. He didn't like it. So he expected us also not to like it. But I feel mm-hmm. it doesn't work like that. Mm-hmm. So let me start from, even in hospitals, eh? Mm-hmm. When you are in the hospital, when a, a patient goes to a hospital, mm-hmm. a sick person goes to a, a hospital mm-hmm. and he's sick, the doctors don't, and he's having a particular sickness, the mm-hmm. doctors don't pierce it in his ears. That you have this sickness, you have this, mm-hmm. you have that. When you When you do that, 
you are, the person's BP rises and all that. You you you, you let the person worry. Yeah. You yeah you get yeah. the person worry. You don't just tell the person straight ahead, madam. You have this sickness. You have this, and it's going to kill you. There's, a, there's an art to telling. Yes, the, person. the approach matters. The approach okay. you take to these kind of issues mm-hmm. matters very much. Mm-hmm. So I hope I have the saying too that I always tell my friends that if you are going to a church and the the pastor is preaching you, mm-hmm. not Jesus. Yeah. Yeah, you are not in the right place. Okay. You should leave the church. If the pastor is not preaching Jesus and is always preaching about you, like mm-hmm. the but pastor the things, doesn't have But the things of Jesus preaches things that would have would require us to not do the things we do as sinners. No, so like, can you in prove preaching it? about no yeah in, in preaching about verse? in the bible i mean the 10 commandments in what we verse? all break it the only commandment jesus actually came to give us mm-hmm. was to what to love one another jesus he didn't no, come to tell us there are 10 so, commandments so the 10 the so ten, jesus came to <laughs> fulfill scripture Mm-hmm. and embody the word basically the ten commandments he he brought a summary of it mm-hmm. right the first four is about loving your god mm-hmm. and the the six that follows is about loving another man mm-hmm. so he just made it See, that simple mm-hmm. as in loving your fellow man biblically please we are, we are speaking <laughs> biblically man represents man and woman please mm-hmm. yeah yeah so so if you if you take the first four and then the last six, you get to know that oh, it's actually the same ten commandments we are working with. But when you look at the the basis of those commandments, the first one is about love God, the sixth is about loving your the, the fellow human being yeah, that you have. Uh-huh. So all the bits about don't commit adultery, don't do not fornicate. lie. It's there. It's about, yeah. If I love you, I won't lie to you. Yeah. So I'm getting there. Mm-hmm. So I'm getting there. That's my point. Um, we are supposed to what love one another and yeah. follow the commandment Jesus brought. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you love Jesus, you wouldn't kill your brother. Yes. If you love Jesus, you wouldn't do certain things. I hope you get my point. Yeah. I'm not yeah. trying to say the Ten Commandments. Jesus came to cancel. But the Martin, I'm sure that. you love Jesus, right? I do. But, uh, but maybe this. I'm coming. I'm coming. Last week, the whole of last week, Ushie so meboa. You fornicated. You're not married. No, why are you putting him there? <laughs> no, I'm just saying. No, I'm so just being direct. You're actually being a pastor right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying. You you know, like, it's good for you to say that um, let's love Jesus. Loving Jesus is enough. But, like, I'm just saying, loving Jesus comes with you picking your cross. Mm. You get it, so and the cross, cross is uh-huh. the low haircut you keep. Or it's not about low haircut. Yeah. It's about there are certain lifestyle Why that if you decide yeah. to really religiously follow God, we can't all do that. Yeah. We are all now. We are all we are we are alive by grace. American God yeah. keeps on having mercy on us and grants us grace, and that's how come some of us are alive. Yeah. Do you understand? I if you. me, I if I was you. God. You, you. I'll, I'll strike oh. people there, though. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. you can't <laughs> use my name, especially people who use my name to sin. Yeah. Like people who would stand on my name and say, Nami to me, me mu and do I a lot of and sin. Do you understand what I mean? I yeah. So I'm just saying that if you decide to follow the path of Christ, it's a gradual process. You can't quickly just get there. You have to go gradually. And in like like doing that, you'd have to there are certain things that you have to gradually gradually stop. Mm. And the hair is I'm not talking one. but you're fixated on the hair. I'm not talking about hair. Yeah, I'm talking yeah, I'm about lifestyle. Because that's, oh, because that looks the like guy, the most the guy obvious. I think we've moved hair. away from he hair. Has, he has tattoos. Tattoos and stuff. Yeah. 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 And we should remember this, when Jesus came, he yeah. came to tell us that the church is for what? Sick people. It's yeah. like a hospital it's yeah. for sick people. Yeah. So the people that come with the hair and all that, mm-hmm. the church is actually for them, not you, the person that you think mm-hmm. you are mm-hmm. perfect and all that. But, but fact, indeed, indeed, but uh, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It stay in one way. Let no, me. As in, when you come, then you come and stay. Aren't you supposed to Move get on. into the system? Why are you in the church? So this is this is where the, the tattoo hair salvation, thing. Salvation. Right? So yeah. I came for salvation. Yeah. Salvation goes beyond my body right but we all do understand the principle of the body is the temple of the lord so you don't want to mistreat it in any way so does it mean that if okay let's say you accept god yes accept christ yes you've accepted him for like let's say two years Mm. you're still in the process maybe when you came in you had tattoos already so Mm -hmm. that doesn't count we're not going to look at that yes but while you're in church will it be prudent 
to still go and have a tattoo. So I will not go and have another tattoo. So that is what that. we are talking about. Depending on, that see, while you are in the yeah. church mm-hmm. you and you are now gradually you are, warming you are, into God, exactly. you have to start living your life mm-hmm. like God. You see, you see so, those those things. Sorry, okay. let me cut you. You see those things. It's not compulsory. Mm-hmm. There's a direction. You see in the in the olden days in the in the past, they used to tell them a man shouldn't wear this, a woman shouldn't Gene wear. Child. It was for the people of those days. So when you come into Christ, I believe when you come into Christ and he doesn't want you to do something like don't wear skirt, he will tell you. It's not a human being that is supposed to talk. So far as you have Christ living but in God you. But God uses people may, too. He uses uh, people. He uses he prophets. Wants, if he wants to tell you, you actually t- <laughs> For example, let me use my mom as, as an example. Before my mom became a, a Christian, eh? I'm sorry. Give me you, one yeah. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sorry for stealing. Before my mom became a Christian, yeah? Mm-hmm. She she liked wearing jeans a lot. Mm-hmm. So it got to a point she became a Christian, she became a leader, eventually she became a leader. Mm-hmm. Then she herself in a dream, um God told her not to wear it again because it's causing distraction and all that. Mm. So she's not wearing it again because she was told in a dream that it's not right for her to wear, not because a pastor or something has told her. But so far as you are in Christ, mm-hmm. he will tell you what to do. You don't have a, you don't need a human being to tell you you have to leave there's this tattoo but, and all that. But so the person having the tattoo, but the tattoo on his body, salvation, yeah, like this is No, I'm just saying, you're right. I'm a firm believer in that that know God for yourself, mm-hmm. get to hear God's voice mm-hmm. for yourself. But you would also be lying to yourself if you think God is going to tell you everything. Exactly. Because he uses people. Do you yeah. understand? Yeah. God is not going to tell you every single thing. There are days where some someone would call you and say, Charlie, and it'll tell you. As much as yeah, you don't internalize it, it's important that you consider it and you pray against it at least. And then you while you further pray and seek God's face, he will now reveal it to you. So if you say that, oh, I saw me, dear, until I hear the voice of God, even if I hear it from someone else, I'm not going to hear it because it's, why isn't God telling me? Sometimes, telling someone? sometimes, sometimes you may be hearing the voice of God, but you know, you can't even know. interpret it. The, the story of um, Samuel and, and um, Eli, Eli, right? Chris. He was, he kept hearing the voice all the time, but it was Eli who had to tell him that, oh, this voice is of God. <laughs> so when you hear it, say what? Your servant listening. Okay, thank you. Like, Diane, not enough for please, I know, the time is not enough. <laughs> okay. uh, 45 minutes is not. <laughs> but it's not a topic, yeah? yeah. Please, so I'm just sharing my opinion. I'm not God. Mm. I'm not, I'm, I'm a sinner. Let's go into just the like scriptures. Go, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So according to a dictionary, Christian, mm-hmm. relating to or professing Christianity or its teachings, what is Christianity? It's an Abrahamic religion based on the life and teachings of Jesus Christ. If you have decided that you want to be a Christian mm-hmm. like Christ, Christ's life, yeah. feelings don't matter. Yeah. That's not convictions. don't matter. Yeah. You are going like Christ. There are instances where they taught us in Bible school where they said, uh, they, they leave you or mm-hmm. whatever and follow. And follow. Yeah. 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 And, follow and they Christ. did. Even though it was a hard decision. How about the rich men who are uh, told? In fact, some of them come and say that they had a dream. God yeah. said, leave, sell everything. Sell or even yeah. Abraham was instructed to kill his son. How about that? <laughs> Judgment. Or oh, what are you saying? Mm-hmm. See, today I had a meeting. And Fifi Kumsin was in that meeting mm-hmm. today. He's, he mentioned that mm. traditionalists are passionate about their religion yeah muslims are passionate about it. you won't go and sit anywhere and hear muslims say that and i'm wearing a, a lady is wearing trousers and she's okay to, to don't cover my hair mm. and why are they i feel like if if i go they for follow the their friday doctrines preaching, to the latter if i go for friday church he's mm-hmm. attacking me so i'm going yeah. who the are you do you understand yeah we have become Christianity, and so we are living it according to how it will be okay for me. Okay, if I fornicate today, I think fornication is okay because then I'm getting to know my boyfriend mm-hmm. who I will marry in future. Hey, mm-hmm. Then yeah. you come to church, and yeah. the man is telling you, see, you can't lead yourself. Provided you have decided to enter that particular church mm-hmm. the day you stepped your foot in that church, not even church, the religion, in the religion, you yeah. have decided that I cannot lead myself no matter who I am. Mm-hmm. I am coming for leadership. Mm-hmm. I am sick. See, me, I've gone to a, 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 a doctor before mm-hmm. and he told me, these are the things you are doing that's causing this and this. Don't do it. Yeah. 
so much coming exactly if you should go to the hospital and they say you have diabetes stop eating in able to st- i mean this. for you to stop or get healthy you need to stop eating sugar you would you would comply you but when it comes to religion you we want to now apply your to your own you conviction know, that's what we always get no, to no, 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 what, so what's it's a christianity a christianity is a lifestyle hey, wow. it's, it's not a religion no, no, okay. Christianity okay. Is never, okay. that's, this is why we, we have the pra- it's, pastors it's lying to us and telling us for him for real lifestyle in the not as in lifestyle as here but life yeah but it's a lifestyle it's your way like you're saying your way Have of living is living like, like living like Christ. like Christ. That's a lifestyle. Yeah, that's a lifestyle I'm so talking about. It's not a religion. Like Christ, this is where Christians get to. Nobody can live, no, no, yeah. live like Christ. And though. we get to. Oh, you're aiming oh, towards. Didn't they you say be perfect. Past, mm-hmm. what, please, it's very narrow wrong. and. Yeah. And narrow. You and understand? Steep, if, yeah. it, if it was easy, mm-hmm. ah, well, do you think we'll have other religions? Yeah. Other religions are strict about what they are doing because they know where they are going to. Mm-hmm. And all of us, we are we are part of this whole problem. Mm-hmm. We see someone doing something wrong. And I cannot say, and yet it's not it's not my space. And and she too, she says, we'll be out on the choices. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, you get it. But we have decided to allow people to be flexible. And see, even these traditional people have Sunday church service. Mm-hmm. Traditional people yeah, yeah. have... And you you dare not walk there with your face front and uh, it's like even even people God. fear yeah, the traditionalists the more than they fear God. That's the difference yeah. between exactly. them and yeah. us. There's we are in a time of grace. We, please, we, please. I'm not talking. But I'm you, not saying we should take the grace. You define the grace according that we to take what the grace. suits you. No, but you define the grace. We have always been in a time of grace. We have always been. We have been to churches where almost every pastor preaches and say that it is not because you pre you 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 do fasting every day that God has mercy on you. It's not mm-hmm. because you are living chest or you are a virgin that God has mercy. Mm-hmm. The mercy che- on you is, is there already. Yeah. So it is not what you are coming to do that. But it is not also an excuse for us to say, um, um, because it all hurts my feelings. Yeah. Wash your pa. Then get we, out of the church. We Let can. the leader lead those who want to. If be you give led. yourself even Simple. a month and say, oh, this month I'm fasting and praying, yeah. and you decide to abstain from. Everything oh, worldly and, feel some weight and everything. Yeah. I mean, you feel very light. Yeah, yeah. And some like whatever your, your target is like with your prayers, it, it happens so fast. You, you I've see, tried that thing a couple see, of some, times. It doesn't always happen you know? like that. The day I decide to enter the... That's the day that I get you get tribulation. And con- and contracts. Yeah, but, but that's the thing. And contracts but that's flowing. the thing. So it's it is a testament testing. that it is not what you do yeah. as a person that gives you the grace yeah. of God. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but here, see, there, there's morality, there's truth, yeah. there's what is good is good, and there's Christianity. Yeah, if you want to be in the life of morality, be there. If you want to be in the life of um, what is good is good, yeah, be there. If you want to be Christ-like, be yeah. Christ-like. I mean, there was something in the Bible, wasn't yeah. he? Didn't yeah. he have a lot of he had, good reds. You yeah. know, yeah. so like I said on the, on the page, if there is a backing. A, a Bible backing that for you. Mm-hmm. Keep it. Nobody will touch you. At the end of the exactly. day, you are going to you render your accounts. Yeah, you get it. You Personally. are going to face your God, mm-hmm. but don't come and say it's touching your emotion. Oh no, why? Anyway, you? we you should know that greater is He that is in me than He that is preach, in the world. Preach, and preach, preach. So preach. It is that what do not forsake the heart. gathering of the saints. The gathering of the saints is the church. Okay. It's a verse. Okay. Okay. It's a verse. okay. okay. So we are wrapping up. Now, hey, we are wrapping up. Please wrap up for me. Second Corinthians. Chapter 5, verse mm-hmm. 17. Mm-hmm. If any man be in Christ, mm-hmm. he is a new creation. Mm-hmm. Behold, all, all things, things are have passed, passed away. And all things, all things are mind. become yeah, as so. new. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> you see, we may have our past lives. And see, please tie in what the guy should do mm-hmm. great. as you wrap up. People who have, um, you know, excuse me for lack of a better word, committed abortions and all of those things. The way the pastor is preaching about that, what would they say? Because it's stuck in their mind. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Just know that so far as I've come into Christ, mm-hmm. it's a personal journey I want to take for my salvation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is to the gentleman. Whatever the pastor would say, mm-hmm. he's preaching. Yeah. There are people in there who are coming to listen to him. And like you said, Kofi Odro, uh, sorry, he cannot go there. He cannot go there. <laughs> yeah. You get it. Funny enough, I love his preaching. Though. I listen every morning. Yeah. Amen. You yeah. understand? Because I know within that what I'm doing is it's not, not it, good. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You don't yeah. need a pastor yeah. to drum it. A, yeah. yeah. But when it comes to the things about her, sorry, let me just um um um, um chip this in. Uh also from, I mean she's late. She told us a story sometime back that, you know, 
uh, ma membo uti don't do work mm-hmm. don't do this don't mm-hmm. style your hair so today be ana duku 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 then they travel to the US mm-hmm. and then lady pastor this one is not even like it's a pastor's <laughs> wife she is the pastor of the church a lady wake be ana abono ah Sarah Jake, Sarah Jake, uh, uh, yeah. Sarah Jake Roberts. Yeah. Christo, some, uh, some, uh, no, no, when she came to the, when she started wearing wig, mm-hmm. you get it. Yeah. It is not just about my hair, I'm mm-hmm. in dreads, mm-hmm. or I have tattoos and all of those things. Yeah, you may have it. You are now in Christ. Personally, within the relationship that God is asking you to live with mm-hmm. man and with God, mm-hmm. are you doing it? Mm-hmm. If you know you are not doing it, and the pastor is speaking about it, you know, you know, then you know there are things to, to change. Thank exactly. you. Thank Left you. me alone. They should tie him, <laughs> chain him, and put him in the seat. Okay. After church, he won't go anywhere. He should stay there. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Martin. Okay. I said, I said, then conversation on Kuyama. Okay. Please wrap up for me. What should a guy do? Uh, okay. So I would say, I've learned new things. I've learned new things here. But I would say you should leave the church. Mm. You should find a place that they are preaching Christ and mm. not preaching Him. Okay. Understand? Yeah. You should find a place that they are preaching Fidel, about Christ. Where are you going? You're not going to wrap up. Uncle for me, bro. Go on. That, that's, that's what I would like to say. Okay. Now, and the fact that we Christians believe that we are in a time of grace and we still believe that Christianity is a religion mm. is, is, is weird, but. I wish there was more time, but yeah. that's what I would, I would like to say. That's okay. what I would like to say. Honestly, for me, I don't have any opinion about this today. Um, it has been a learning. It has been a learning well, curve. The he said. <laughs> it has been a learning curve for me because even me, I'm still in the process mm. of you know drawing close to God. Yeah. So yeah. I'm still learning. I'm still you know trying to trying my best to live a Christ like. Life. I'll tell so, your pastor not to preach about fornication. This oh, me even if he preaches, I'm not the only one. Even he, I'm sure he. he. <laughs> <laughs> Mommy, busy. Yeah, I'm not gonna come, baby. <laughs> okay, so um, let me read a few messages.